we're here today at a dairy in Central Texas, milks about 3,000 Holstein cows, use a 72 cow carousel, similar to what we've seen on previous dairies. Um, and uh, this is a freestall barn that we're in today. Uh, I kind of noticed that he's not using sand for bedding. Uh, what kind of manure is he using here? This he's using composted manure for his bedding uh, here on this facility. Okay, so is this uh, primarily just the raw manure or is it manure that is flushed and separated? How does he do this? What he does is uh, flushes his barns here with a, with a flush system uh -huh. and it goes down to a separating system that he has and from there the separated solids go to his on-site composting garden. Okay. Why don't we walk down and take a look at his uh, facility? That sounds like a good plan. Okay. Well, as we mentioned a while ago while we were in the freestall barns, this facility utilizes a flush system. Uh, flush comes out of the back of the freestall barns down here into um, this sand trap and goes through a trash guard. And uh, why don't you talk a little bit about the process that's taking place there? Yeah, he's uh, using the recycled water to flush his uh, manure alleys. And then that water basically ends up in this mechanical separation and the uh, uh, gravitational settling system. First, that water is being conveyed from the tank that you talked about with the pumps into the mechanical separation system where about 25 to 30 percent of the solids are being separated and they're piled up there and those piled solids are going to be part of his composting system that he uses for bedding. And then the liquid basically ends up in the uh, settling basin and then that's a serpentine type four chamber settling basin and the effluent out of the settling basin goes into his secondary lagoon. That's where he stores this uh, effluent and uses it for irrigation and also uses it again for the flushing of the out. And then the settling, uh, the separated solids are hauled to his compost yard mm -hmm. where he makes his compost to be recycled back into his bedding. Exactly. Well, why don't we go take a look at that compost yard? Sounds good. All right. Well, here we are at the compost yard where he brings his separated solids places in these windrows and uh, <clears throat> keeps them turned to go through the composting process and then once it's uh, composting process is completed it goes back into the freestall barns as bedding and uses a recycles recycles the product and um, utilizes it in his barn you want to talk a little bit about um, the composting process and what needs to take place here yeah you know, initially when he uh, flushes his uh, manure alleys, the flush water has about 3 to 4 percent solids. And then when he runs that flush water from his waste solid separation system, the mechanical separator, he has about 20 percent solids in that pile that we saw earlier. And uh, that pile is then brought in here. And when there is, uh, here is where it's windrowed, and then goes through a turning process. So composting, as we know, is an aerobic process. And in doing so, he's heating up these compost piles. And by heating these compost piles up, he is also destroying several different types of pathogens. And so once you kill the bacteria, this is somewhat a sterile product again. And then all of this uh, composted and mature pile ends up again on his uh, free soil barns where it's used for bedding. So that completes the entire cycle of his waste management system. You mentioned a little bit about the heating process and the heating cycle. What, what temperature, is that something you monitor? What temperature does it need to reach? Generally, when you start up a compost pile, if it is at about 60% plus moisture, which he does have from his separated solids, and it has about uh, a carbon to nitrogen ratio of about uh, Oh, anywhere between 10 to 15. Uh, the, uh, as soon as he starts building the pile, the air comes into the system, the bacteria start to utilize some of that carbon and some of that nitrogen and the byproduct is heat. And that heat then starts to build in the system and within two or three days you can have temperatures upwards of 110, 120 degrees Fahrenheit. At the height of its composting we can have temperatures of up to 140, 150 degrees. And then he, when he stops turning, after a while, 
those temperatures start to go down. So you have this up and down cycle of temperature. And then it may go up again at 120, 110, but eventually after three or four weeks, the temperatures are just above or at the ambient temperature. That's when this compost pile is completed and it's ready to be matured and then taken to, uh, uh, to the freeze stall barns for bedding again. So it takes about three to four weeks to go through the process? The yeah, it takes, takes roughly about three to four weeks to go through the first heating cycle and then basically maturing that compost. And then it takes another three to four weeks to cure that compost. And when you're heating it up at 130 to 140 degrees Fahrenheit, you're destroying uh, many of the pathogens. Not all, but most of them are destroyed. So what you have is a fairly sterile separated solid material that is now gone through a composting cycle and so the same system now can be used hauled back to uh, the, the free stall and that composted material is now used for bedding again okay. so that sounds, completes the cycle sounds great